Right then, brand new video guys. Five ways how to lower your scores with a better short game. We're gonna be doing a series where we look at short game, we're gonna be looking at our iron play, and then we're gonna be looking at our T play. So today we're talking all about the short game because this is an area of the game, if we get good at it, we don't even have to be fantastic with our driver and our irons. You could hit it near the fairway, get it near the green, up and down it every time, and you're gonna be saving a lot of shots. So let's get stuck in and find out what these five things are that are gonna help you shoot lower scores. If you are new around here though, guys, do remember, hit that subscribe button down below. It's totally free to do. You're gonna get free golf lessons every week. You're gonna get better at golf. Why not do it? Just hit it down below there. Let's get on with the lesson. So I found myself 48 yards to the front of the green. It's 83 yards to the back of the green and 65 to the middle. Now that seems like we could almost from here kick it to the front of the green. And sometimes I bet you're left thinking that exact thing after you've duffed a pitch about 10 yards in front of us. I could have kicked that on the green. Why have I done that again? And one of the problems that I see from a lot of my students when we first start talking about short game, we're now obviously quite close to the flag and we're getting to the point where it probably doesn't need a full swing. But we're standing to it like we are trying to make a full swing. So for me, I would be using my 52 degree watch here because that flag that we can just see at the back there, that is 72 yards back to that flag. But for me, 52 uh, degree wedge goes 115 yards when I hit it full out. So I'm not gonna adopt the same setup as I would do. But what I would see is that a lot of people do stand to it rather widely. They make quite a long swing and then realize when they're up at the top, oh no, that's too far have to quit and then we get the big duff before the ground we get the thin and we've not got the shot we wanted we're left kicking ourselves thinking i hate that one why can't i pitch why can't i chip so what we need to do we need to make sure we're set up for success so if i just turn to the camera this way what we're going to try and do is make sure we've got the basics in play to make sure number one that we are hitting our pitches onto the green even if it is into a 20 foot circle in the middle of the green or around the flag you don't have to be knocking it stone dead right now if you're someone who's playing off an 18 or a 28 handicap or even more the first thing to do is like i say number one make sure the pitch is now hitting the green so pitching setup what we need is we're going to have a smaller stance so if i were to take my normal stance for a 52 it would be this wide here where you see the insoles of my shoes just inside shoulder line there. Then from there, what I would be normally doing is making a big turn and trying to hit this ball that 115 yards. But like I say, it's 72 yards, so I'm only really gonna need to fly this about 65 at the moment. So for that, I'm gonna see that I now go to a smaller stance here. So I'd say roughly about three club heads wide is my stance for when I'm hitting these pitches that are gonna be my sort of half swing shots. So three club heads wide. From there, I'm gonna place the ball in the middle of my stance now. So we see that just here. And then from there, what I want to do is put some weight onto my lead side. So my left foot as a right-handed player, I'm gonna put about 65% onto my lead side. The reason for this, I'm trying to get a real crisp strike as I hit this golf ball. And because I'm not making my full swing and having a big turn where I load and then transfer the pressure and weight forwards and then turn, I need to set it a little bit forwards at the start. So once we understand that, the next Next bit, like I say, is that we're not trying to knock the stick out. For you, as a higher handicapper, let's say, you're not meant to hit these fantastic pitches that go in real quick, spin round the flag, come zipping back and finish two feet away. We want to get something that, at the moment, if we could put it in that 20, 30 foot circle on the green, we could two put and we'd feel 
really good walking to the next tee instead of like I say this duff that's gone in front of us and we're left kicking ourselves so once we get into this situation let's temper our expectations what I want you now to do when you're going to make sure that your pitches are hitting the green you're going to take that good setup you're going to have a few practice swings it's going to be a little bit of a smoother um, swing as we're going through it's not the full out swing and then from there like I say let's ignore the flag now but what I'm going to do is feel like I draw a 20 foot circle and the tip of it the left top left corner because there's a bit of trouble back left here it's just gonna just gonna be walking over the pin there a little bit so it's just gonna get in if I do hit it long and left I'm gonna hit it near the stick but if I can hit it sort of pin high into the middle of my circle that's a really good pitch shot it doesn't have to be the wonder shot so good setup that smaller setup ball in the middle weight forwards try and hit it into that 20 foot circle ignore the stick and there we go I've left myself about a 15 foot putt and was a real simple shot there so first things first make sure our pitches are hitting the green go through that little bit of a setup check check that you're doing it and you're not going through the big setup then stop trying to hunt flags if you're not able to do it let's just try and get it into a 20 foot circle on the green and give yourself a putt let's go and take a look at the next thing so the second thing on our list is pitching over something when we're getting to the green here we've got a bunker it might be that it's a little brook a stream it might be an undulation a bit of heavy rough whatever it may be I bet this is something that is people's worst nightmares watching at home because as soon as we stand to this golf ball or even as we're approaching it and walking it up the don'ts start coming into our mind don't duff it don't thin it into the face don't hit it in there don't do this we're clouded with so many bad thoughts when we get over this shot when really that bunker shouldn't even come into play for me my flag at this point now all the way back to that green is uh, to the flag sorry is about 45 yards so I'm not running it here because I know I need to fly it I'm going straight over this the first half a second it'll be up in the air not even reaching its apex of its flight before it gets up over here so it shouldn't be a worry but like I say it is because it's so glaringly obvious there but if we took ourselves and just placed myself 10 yards to the left here where it is fairway we wouldn't have those thoughts as much we wouldn't think don't duff it onto the fringe don't get on the rough don't do this we just think right okay pretty simple this I'll run it up the green and you could maybe play a little bit of a lower flighted shot like I say the only difference is you've got to throw it over something a little bit so when we're doing this what we need is that level of commitment and how we're going to do that is going to change our perception of what we're going to try and do so as we're looking here like I say it's the old pink elephant in the room don't 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 think of a pink elephant one comes into your head so when we get up we've got to take this out of our minds we've got to now pick a spot on that green that I want to land up that my ball up to and our focus is do land it on that spot I want to see it go here do hit a good crisp chip do make sure I get the uh, swing going through and one of the big things I want you to focus on and I had this with a member from this golf club recently Walter we talked about these do's and don'ts and we talked about the follow-through because what we want to do when we're thinking of the don't everything stops as if there's a brick wall or someone here stopping us not letting the club carry on on its journey so the big thing I want you to do when chipping over a hazard number one is pick a spot out on the green that is going to be your laser focus point you're really going to think about that spot there you're going to see your ball landing on it the journey it's going to take to get onto that spot and really focus in on it then your one swing thought is that we're going to keep the width into our follow through so we're not having stop don't let the body turn to target we're going to make sure that laser point that i'm looking at my hips sorry those are my hips my hips and my chest and my club are all turning to them at the end so i'm allowing the club to go on its journey and let it carry on 
and keep turning through and not being scared stiff and stopping as we get to the golf ball. So for me, I'm gonna try and land this in the shadow that we can just see there, and I'm gonna let it run out to the flag so I've got the correct club. Again, a similar sort of setup from the pitch we had before. And my main thought now is keep the width into my follow through and get it looking at my shadow, at my laser point that I'm gonna land it on. So I can focus on it, little wiggle, last focus on where I'm landing. Oh, I've landed it about half a foot out of it. And it was a fantastic little chip, really crisp strike on it, the flight I wanted. And as I was stood over it, I'd almost forgot the bunker was there because I was that focused on my point out there. So point number two, pick a spot, make it everything in your mind about that spot. And let's see that we can get the width and the turn following through to that spot. So point number three on our short game list is bunkers. Now, very much like chipping over a hazard, bunkers can put a lot of fear in people. It can be something where we spend three, four, five, you name it, countless shots trying to get out of the bunkers and it can really ruin a lot of scorecards. So for me, point number three is getting out of the bunker every single time, hopefully on our first time. There will be circumstances if it was plugged under a lip or under the face, you know, or an absolutely terrible lie where this won't count. But if we can get in and we've got a pretty normal bunker here where the lip's only sort of waist height, I can just get it out. And what we need to do, number one, is let's understand that we're not gonna be probably getting it into six foot um, as we hit these out. Some of the shots, you know, when I see people hitting them, when I take them into the bunker for lessons, they're trying to get this, I need to hope, get it high, get it spinning and lots of fancy stuff, but they've not even got the basic skill just to get out. So like the first tip, if we can sort of draw a 20 foot circle around an area on the green, even if it's just getting it onto the green to start off with, that would be fantastic. So how are we gonna do that is the big question question. Now, one of the big problems, if I were to make a practice swing here in the bunker, which you're not allowed to do normally, but what I see a lot of is that people, A, try and help the golf ball up, so they move backwards because they're trying to lift it out of the bunker, which leads to them either bottoming out, if my ball was here, it would be leading to me bottoming out well before it, and I'd probably either not even hit it or I'd just top it or move it a yard or two forwards. The second thing is that when people come in, they might not try and lean back and help it out, but what they do is don't even let the club head go past the golf ball. So it's like it digs in and just stops there. So what we need to try and do is understand as we're going through how we're gonna play these. So when we're playing our bunker shots, what we wanna try and see is that, like I say, we've already tempered our expectations that we're gonna hit it just onto the front of the green to start with, even if the pin's all the way at the back, we're just getting it up and out to start with. We wanna now see that we build a good base because obviously the sand is unstable, so we need to make ourselves stable. So we wiggle in and get a good base. From there then, what I'm gonna try and do is put the ball a little bit further forward in my stance. So it's gonna be about two inches behind my lead heel. I've made this nice wide base and I've got that ball two inches behind my lead heel. Then I'm gonna lean about 70% of my way into my lead thigh. So I look like I'm really ready to hit down on the golf ball. Remember, in the bunker, we're not trying to hit the ball, we're trying to let the golf club slide underneath it, take a pocket of sand, and the loft of the golf club is gonna lift it out. So when I've lent into this lead side, I'm now gonna stay in there the whole time. I'm not going back off it and then going into it again. I'm gonna set myself up and leave it all in this lead side. The loft of the club, I've got a 58 here, is gonna help me get it out. So I don't need to do that. So you could even open it out a little bit more if we wanted to for a little bit more loft and then take our grip. That is gonna also activate the bounce a little bit more to allow it to dig through. But then the big thing that I want you to try and do is we'd have a little box around the um, golf ball here that is about three or four inches in size on either side and then from there what I want to try and do is see that I 
make a good swing and you'd be surprised how much of a swing you can make to get the golf ball out. What I see a lot of people doing when they get this stopping one is short and stoppy into it, but you're going to get almost that much sand between the golf ball and your club face. So as soon as we've got all that on there, it's not really gonna go shooting out that much. So we've gotta give it a little bit of force. So what I want you to do is your only swing thought is make a good full swing and carry on into your follow through. So once we've got the weight in the lead side, that ball a bit forwards, and we're gonna try and let the club slide underneath the golf ball, we make a good full swing, committed into our follow through, and we will get the ball out first time. So set up, look at my target, weight's in the lead side, good full swing. Perfect, and you can see there how much speed I had going into that golf ball, how much sand I took, and it just propelled the golf ball out. So that is the third thing on our list, making sure we get out every single time of the bunkers. So the fourth thing on our short game list, getting comfortable with one of your wedges. Because what I see from a lot of people, they've almost got a fear of chipping with a wedge. They just revert straight back to either putting it along the ground, using a hybrid sometimes, or even using a seven iron, and they just stay away from the wedge. It doesn't work at the minute, so I'm not gonna use it. But if we don't use it, it's never gonna get better. So pick one of your wedges, it can be your lob wedge, it can be your sand wedge, your gap wedge, your pitching wedge, something that's gonna enable us to get a little bit of height on the golf ball, a little bit of lift, and get comfortable with it, because you can do so much with one wedge. So here, a little bit of a knoll, about two feet high before I get up onto the green there, you can probably just make the flag out in the corner, the sun's beaming across so I didn't wanna blind you. But what I'm gonna be able to do with just my 52 that I've got here, I can hit three different types of shot. I could hit a high one, I can hit a standard one, and I can hit a low one. But like I say, if I've not got it out of my bag and I hate the thing, I'm never gonna actually be able to do this. So get comfortable with one wedge, and when you're out on the golf course, Obviously there's gonna be times when you need to use a specific club, i.e. a lob wedge to get it up and down very quickly. But if it's just a standard short game shot where you're in and around the green, there's not much to, uh, there's not too much trouble going on, just get used to using one wedge. So for me, my 52, I know if I play the ball back in my stance and I lean the handle forwards a little bit more, I can get this club running out very low, just like that one there, hit the stick. Ooh, just runs by. If I were to then play the ball out of the middle of my stance, with again, the handle lent forwards, but not quite as much, I could see that I could get a bit more of a standard little pitch shot. And then as I go through it into my final one, if I were to put the ball forwards, I can then hit a little bit of a higher shot. So just by spending some time with this club, I've been able to adopt it into different styles of shots and get loads of different things to happen with it. So if it is something where I am nervous with my chips, I know that if I pull my 52 out, I'm confident that I can make it do anything, high, low, medium. So already I'm starting to ease myself in because the short game is a little bit of a nervy one. The ones where we're expected to get it close to the hole, we're meant to hit a good chip. I could literally roll the ball out to the flag from here and get it pretty close. So chipping it should be pretty easy. Final one here, I've now put the ball in line with the insole of my lead shoe and I'm just going to feel that I let the loft look a little bit more up the sky as we go through and we should see a bit of a higher shot. There we go and three ways to make one club get close to the flag. So get comfortable with a wedge guys. Pick one that is going to be your go-to wedge. Start using it and start getting better with it. So our fifth and final tip on the short game list to save us shots is all about us on the putting green. Let's stop wasting putts because one of the things that I see that really costs us shots on the short game is poor pace control. So we've managed to get ourselves onto the green like so we may have hit into that 20 foot circle. It might be a 30 foot circle that you do for yourself. But what starts to happen is 
we end up whacking the golf ball or leaving it dramatically short when we've got a long putt like this. So you'll notice now that I've got a box of tees around the flag. And the aim of this uh, drill, if you were to do this, you can do this in different stages, you can play it in different ways, is just to learn about the putter swinging when we've got a lot of distance to cover. So for me, I must have 35 feet here at the moment and what I've got to learn is about the momentum and the rhythm of my stroke because what I see a lot of times happening here on the greens is that you know in some cases because there's such an aggressive change in the length and the speed of the stroke from back to through sometimes we get uh, instances where players hit the green before the golf ball so we actually fat our putts we can thin them and you know for a small strike where we're not making a lot of movement it's only really our arms that are rocking what we want to try and see is that we're getting a good strike to actually control that distance so the aim of this drill is, like I say, just to really learn about your pace control. So you can do it where you'd have either 10 balls here and you'd put into the box. Each one is a club length, a putter from around there. Or you could do it in a ladder system. So maybe start at five paces or three paces from the start of the box and then go three paces with 10 balls so you're out to 30 paces and just go from the start of the ladder all the way back down and just notice the stroke and just see if you can start to actually roll some balls into the box because what we wouldn't want to see is something where I really decelerate and that's only got half of the way for me now or the next one where I'd make a stroke where I didn't feel it was long enough and then I try and hit it too much and it's gone racing off past the box. We want to try and see that we can control our length of stroke and like I say feel the rhythm there it's not really changing too much and if we can get that sort of stroke to happen nice and smooth we'll get in just rolls up in towards the box so when we're on the green we've really got to learn to control that pace it's something that is very simple but will just take a few hours of practice time to get used to it really think about that pendulum like stroke feel it rock 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 not uh, stop start stop start and feeling that it's really jabby we've got to feel it nice and smooth feel that we're just letting the putter flow a little bit more as we get through it so five things there guys how to pitch it onto the green how to get over a hazard how to get out of a bunker getting comfortable with one wedge and learning some pace control on the greens if we can master all those or definitely improve on all those we're going to see our scores start to tumble so get out to your short game if you've uh, you've got the facility to practice at the moment if not when you're out on the course just try and work on those shots maybe drop a ball if there's no one around and you're not holding up play just try them out on the golf course. The more you try them, the better you're gonna get um, you're gonna get at those shots, guys. So give them a go. Thanks for watching. Guys, as well, do remember to hit that subscribe button, like I said earlier. Totally free, free golf lessons every week to help you get better at your game. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in another lesson.